Those of us determined to defend Great Britain's rich heritage, rituals and traditions against the sustained attacks of the woke elites have a new champion. Founded in 2009, the Common Sense Society aims to explore the ideas, cultures and landscapes that have shaped the history of the world, the better to foster human flourishing. Already established in the US and in several European countries, now the Society has opened a branch here. The director is Emma Webb, broadcaster and political commentator and well-known to viewers and listeners of GB News. Emma joins me now. Hi, Emma. Hi, Neil. Great to have you here Good again. to be with you. Our, uh, our heritage and traditions are under sustained attack, are they not? Absolutely. And I think um, the Common Sense Society in every country where it has a presence is working to try and sustain those principles that we believe um, maintain human flourishing, flourishing that has been proven across generations, wisdom that we know works, that sustain beauty, liberty and prosperity, three things that we believe are interdependent. Um, and I think what we've seen over the last couple of decades or more, um, even over potentially across a few generations now, we've seen this gradual withering away of these fundamental um, I suppose you'd say the fundamental soil that allows that flourishing to take place. And that is now really bearing fruits or the opposite of that. Um, we're actually starting to see, I think, some serious decline in our societies. And so when we talk about common sense, what we're really referring to is that accumulated wisdom across the generations that we're trying to keep the, the flame burning of um, in all of those countries where we have a presence. It's, like, it's the sense of the commons, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is to see us, you know, because common sense doesn't always feel, you know, Particularly very ubiquitous. Common. Yeah, I think, you know, w w the common sense is this accumulated wisdom that very often people who don't have a voice in society are the real custodians of. And we've seen that slipping away in many aspects of our society. And so what the Common Sense Society does in various different ways, in different ways in different countries, is that we have all sorts of programmes. We have fellowship programmes that have created an international alumni network. Um, but we also are essentially forming this um, pre-political network to call on, on Roger Scruton's ideas of mm. the pre-political plural. We're quite a broad church. We have people who would describe themselves as being on the left and on the right. We're not a political organisation, as I say, we're pre-political. And we're nurturing that society in the truest sense of the word. Um, and that is in itself a sort of custodian, a champion of that wisdom that has been passed down across the generations that now I think we see this prevailing idea that, you know, we have individuals who think that you can, from scratch, create the blueprint for society on, based on reason alone, that they themselves have come up with this sort of utopian thinking. Um, but actually, on the contrary, our, what we believe is that, um, that there is a certain things that have been passed down to us, that have been tried and tested, that we know work, and we want to keep those things alive so that, um, so that our societies are able to flourish. And that, as I say, is a sort of pre-political social activity. We're an international network of citizens who are working to forward these principles. Jasmine, when I, when I hear Emma use a word like beauty, yeah. you, you almost, before you remind yourself not to, you almost are taken aback mm -hmm, by the word. Mm -hmm. It feels as though there's been a, a prolonged period by which we've been encouraged to be embarrassed yes. by valuing something like beauty. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And, and it, it does make you think, you know, that as you mentioned beauty, a, a, along with other sort of intellectual elements, you think, oh, um, but, you know, when you, when you go to a country... Um, for example, China at the moment seems to hate beauty. Um, America, parts of America, some of the American cities, you just think they, they just really had not thought about beauty at all. And then you go to Lots European of British cities. towns. Oh, Come well, on. yes, no, absolutely <laughs> true. But then you get, you're in London or, you know, one of the, Rome, whatever, one of the big cities. And it feeds your soul. You know, beauty is soul. And it's one of those things like poetry. You know, we, we don't know that we need it, but we do need mm -hmm. it. We need it for, for our our existence um, and and I, I do think it's, it's marvellous that that has been included in the list because it shows how important it is. Emma, it feels as though almost the culture of the of, of past generations in your hands and in the present moment almost becomes a counterculture. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know, there's almost something, rebe well there is something rebellious about wanting to say I want to champion old ideals, mm -hmm. ancient is, ideals. There is something that's, I think, 
fundamentally countercultural. I mean, it is in the most explicit sense countercultural, um, but it is rebellious in some way um, because I think that what we're trying to preserve and what we're trying to um, cultivate is uh, a way of thinking that is almost antithetical to the prevailing ideas mm. in society today. And like you were saying about beauty, you know, the, the idea that there are certain fundamental prerequisites that society needs in order to make real art possible, um, in order to allow people to be truly and fundamentally free, to give them their liberty, that there are certain things that make a society prosper and that have, you know, all around the world have liberated people from poverty, mm. have liberated people from totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the people um, within our network, including the late Sir Roger Scruton, um, whose um, wife Sophie is one of our trustees, they were involved in the underground universities. And there's a real sort of spirit of that underground university in, a, in what we're doing. Um, and it's, it's trying to keep that candle burning in the darkness, really. Um, mm. And I think that that's what make us, makes us fundamentally different to a lot of organisations that already exist, is that we, we're, we're sort of upstream from, from everything else. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to cultivate those fundamental principles. And it is countercultural because it's not this idea that, you know, that even talking about beauty is somehow anachronistic, mm -hmm. that it's some old idea that we should be free and that we should prosper and that we should be surrounded by beauty and feel that we're at home in the world with beautiful landscapes and live in buildings that aren't completely disgustingly ugly, mm -hmm. um, that, that make people, you know, miserable mm -hmm. and atomized. Mm -hmm. That the idea that there, there are these, these principles that, that are interconnected, that surround us in a kind of ecosystem that allow for that human flourishing has become a very anachronistic idea when, you know, the prevailing dominating idea is that, as Laura has talk, talked about so much, is sort of technocrats mm. who want to rule everything by the science. Yeah, Laura, you touched on it earlier when yeah. we were on another topic about the land, uh, the, the land mm, and, yeah, the, and, yeah. the and the connection with the land is mm. something that is not to be taken for granted. And if we are, if we are cut off at the roots from the land, mm. then we lose almost everything. Absolutely. Now, I feel a spiritual thirst when you put together this trinity of liberty, prosperity and beauty. I thirst for it. Mm. I'm lucky enough to have been to a couple of the Common Sense Society salons. And the funny thing is, that I... You're going to like this, Emma, because Emma's <laughs> asked me about my political leanings before, and I'm quite apolitical, really, and she's right, it's a very pre-political space. But the thing is, if, if it didn't feel so radical, I probably wouldn't have discovered some inner socially conservative bones. <laughs> because you do have the sense you're in some kind of naughty underground meeting with people that value beauty and liberty. Um, and it's beauty, like of course... It's society. It is yes. a bit. Be beauty is about what we see reflected in nature, and the human spirit is then to see that reflected in architecture, in art, in poetry, in literature, in TV, in everything. We, we want to see beauty mirrored in the world around us. And it shouldn't be anachronistic to want that, and yet it feels like it is. So, um, anyway, you, you've made me feel like a radical. <laughs> what, do we, what do we do, Emma? What, do, what does each of us do to to stand up in defence of the, the very values that you're describing? I well, I think that people have to do. They have to get involved. They have to do things. And like I say, we're, we're an international network of, of citizens across the world, across North America and Europe. Anybody can apply to our fellowship programme. There are lots of ways that people can get inv involved, signing up to our mailing list, that kind of thing. Um, but as, as Laura was saying, you know, we, we have people in our network who are academics, musicians, artists, playwrights, mm. authors, business people, people from every imaginable sector. And there are lots of people who, who are within their own s spheres of, of, um, of work are, are, are in the darkness. They're surrounded by people where they, they don't have liberty, prosperity mm. and beauty in their lives. Mm. And there is a real catharsis mm. of people coming together. And mm. yes, it's a bit mischievous and, mm. and, and it's a bit rebellious in many ways. Um, but there is, there, is a, there is this kind of um, momentum and, and real, like Laura was saying, a, a thirst for it. Um, and we've, we've discovered that both privately um, and publicly th over the process of our launch. And I think that the fundamental thing for people to do is to do. You yeah. have to get out there and you have to live these principles mm. because they mm. don't maintain themselves. Mm. We'll have to leave that there. Emma Webb, it's always lovely to have you here. I'm sure we could, all, we could talk yeah. about this topic alone <laughs> and, until 8 o'clock. Mm. It's inspiring. So thanks so much for bringing that to us this evening.